Supervisor Miller. Um, I have uh, discomfort with this as well. Um, one of the reasons is that Mr. Huckleberry sent out a couple of different memos with conflicting information. Uh, and one of them, he said there were going to be uh, only three new positions on another. He said four. He was going to move the three over to uh, to this new department from the public defender's office. However, after the hiring of Freeze, he hired two more employees into the public defender's office. And as a matter of fact, 50 employees have been hired since the hiring of Freeze in total. So, and that amounts to $1.9 million uh, since March, March 16th, between that and April 27th. So along with that, I, I'm concerned that we're creating another bureaucracy that isn't needed. I, I, I guess my question would be, probably for uh, Ms. Lesher, is how have we dealt with this for all these years to ensure there was Ms. Wheeler, I think Ms. Wheeler might be okay. an appropriate individual. Um, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller. We can't hear you. Now? Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, um, I'm sorry, could you tell me exactly what you'd like um, me to answer? We've had this organization in place, organized under the Public Defender's Office forever, and Maricopa did centralize and create the similar what, to what we're doing now in 2007 to increase efficiencies. My concern is with the um, growing, with another department, another bureaucracy begins to grow. And if I look at Mr. Huckleberry's memos, he's talking about it being cost neutral with the creation of uh, or moving positions out of the public defender's office into this new department. However, as I said, since the hiring freeze of March 16th, between then and April 27th, we've added $1.9 million to the payroll, including two new positions. These three positions were supposed to move over to the new department. However, we created two new positions. Um, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, we haven't created any positions yet, um, and this would be the first position. And um, so it's always been the same number of positions. Um, there were, there are a total of eight positions in play, I would say. Seven of those uh, would be transfers to the new department from the Public Defender's Office and one would be a new position in the new department, which is the one before you today. Um, originally, we thought that two of those might be new in the new department, but instead there'll be transfers, and the new ones are forecast to be in the public defender's office, but they have not been created yet. And they will be relatively uh, lower paying positions compared to the ones that will move, so there will actually be a slight savings there. In addition, there will be three other positions eliminated at the Public Defender's Office, as well as one at OCAP. So overall, with the moves and the two potential new positions at PD plus this one, it is a net savings in well, moving the positions around. According to Mr. Huckleberry's memo on April 24, he's talking about the elimination of three vacant positions and it being cost neutral. It's not because he hired two more people into the public defender's office after moving these people out. So we have conflicting information from his April 24th memo and then again on May 1st there was another memo that conflicts. He's talking about four positions being eliminated on page two of the May 1st memo. So there's a lot of conflicting information out here and uh, we don't know what's going on right now. And if you add up the salaries for the post-transfer versus the current, that's a $21,000 increase just for the uh, staff that are there right now. So it is, it is not cost neutral. But of most concern is the fact that we have conflicting memos with the, uh, you know, one saying four, one saying three, and then we're hiring new employees after we implemented a hiring freeze on, in uh, March. So I, I, I would like to move that we continue this to the May 19th meeting. Oh. Madam Chair. Supervisor Lee is. I, I would ask Supervisor Miller. It, I, she made a motion, I guess. You need and there, to, yes. Yeah, there, there was no second. Okay. Uh, motion died for lack of a second. Um, what two positions are we talking about now? 
He's got, uh, he shows uh, an administrative services manager, legal administrator, et cetera, moving over there. And then the positions, he's got a uh, public defender. Yeah, but which two did we hire in between April and today? A public defender, uh, Morgan Angling, a public defender, was hired on April 20th. And Raina Beatty, hired on 427, another public defender. Uh, one is an attorney and one is a legal secretary. Those two positions were created in the public defender's office after March 16th, actually, well, they were April 20th. So that that's very well reason. may be true. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Ms. Ms. Wheeler, do you know anything about that? Um, Madam Chair, Supervisor Elias, those positions do not have anything to do with this. Um, and I'm, they're cheaper than contract attorneys. I mean, I love you attorneys. So. Correct. I, I believe those would be replacements for people who yes. had left the public <laughs> defender's office, and right. it's unrelated to this. Right. Because that's part of the problem that we're addressing this here, frankly, the folks, is the fact that we have contract attorneys who make a bundle of money, and, and frankly, if we pay them by the year rather than by the hour, things tend to work out a little better for us. We have to be honest about that. And I think the savings that Mr. Huckleberry was alluding to is frankly a, a deal where we're betting on the come. If we create this department in a year, we're going to start to save money on it. And, and that's a difficult one, but, but frankly, given the institutional knowledge that I have about IB and PD, uh, it's a very expensive proposition. And it continues to be. And contract attorneys go up and down as a cost because it's always a mostly, variable as to how many are going to Mostly up. <laughs> mostly up, but sometimes down because it's a variable. We don't know how many cases are going to come up. Yeah, it depends on how many, yeah, it depends on what the sheriff does and the right. various um, uh, public safety uh, officers do in other jurisdictions. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I have my concerns about the ethics of of uh, running the department in the manner that's being proposed. Uh, but I think the money thing is, is, is nebulous, and frankly, it's a variable that we just try and control the best we can. That's why I think the plans that are, are currently being proposed to create this department, to move towards more electronic files, to get away from all the paper that we have, to move away from, from an older way of doing business and modernizing things, probably a good thing. All of that is probably a good thing that makes sense. But I think this board has to recognize, again, that we're betting on the count. I agree. Supervisor Valadez. Madam Chair, um, we've heard uh, from Supervisor Elias about a potential ethical issue, and I think it's a very good point that I'd like to hear from council whether or not it exists, A, and B, how do we ensure going forward if there is an issue uh, that it's brought to light and resolved. Madam Chair, Supervisor Valdez, um, the way I understand this proposal is that uh, this position is going to have administrative oversight over the various offices, and that the various offices, PDLD and so forth, are going to continue to operate independently in terms of their legal judgment and their ethical standards regarding their cases. And I think that's the understanding that everybody can have, and that's fine if that continues. Um, in terms of going forward, obviously, if that breaks down and people don't honor um, their respective um, limits on, on, on their duties and so forth, then it's up to the lawyers that are involved, and there are good lawyers in every one of these entities, as well as um, the individual that's proposed to take this new position. Uh, they can certainly take recourse in terms of uh, any kind of ethical um, issues that they see. So. I think the arrangements, as it's as it's set up, should work, assuming everybody fulfills the responsibilities as they as they should. And let me. And so we're basically looking at some case management issues, but we would also note, for the record, that this should this um, classification um, move forward, the individual is an exempt individual, and so that means if it's not working out, we have a recourse. Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Weaver, how does it work right now? How are, how, are, how are we avoiding the issues with the conflicts right now? Uh, is it working? Have we had issues? Well, I, I'm not involved in the management of the county, nor am I involved in any oversight of, of these organizations. They're um, 
we wouldn't be allowed to do that because we're the county attorney's office. So we, we maintain yeah. a separate um, a position from these other agencies. But Perhaps that's a question better directed to Ms. Wheeler. Um, Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, um, there is a, a system of checks and balances that's set up right now that would in fact continue with this new organizational structure. Um, when new cases come into the system um, for defense, they initially would go to the public defender and there's a conflict check to see if, see if there's a conflict, and if there is, then it would go to the legal defender, and if they have a conflict, then it goes to the court appointed counsel. Uh, which is, as Supervisor Elise has pointed out, gets very expensive very quickly. Um, so that system would all remain in place. And this new position, the director of the department would have direct oversight over the contract counsel operation. Excuse me. But all of the other heads of the other four offices would still be solely responsible for managing the cases and client representation. There would not be any communication among those offices or with the No ex parte director. communication. Or, or no communication no. about cases between this position as the head of the department and each defender, so to speak, public defender, legal defender, OCC. They would be solely responsible for managing the, the cases and client representation. Okay, so we're, this is going to, uh, by creating this department, is going to help us avoid using as much court appointed counsel. Um, is that the case? That is the, the hope and the purpose that this person, by having a unified department um, at the management level, there will be more flexibility and say, determining that we are needing contract counsel for certain types of cases and it would be more cost efficient instead to hire an attorney at the public defender's office because then they could take those cases at a lower cost. Right now they're all kind of siloed and so there's not the flexibility to move, um, the department. to move uh, positions around. <laughs> Excuse me just a minute. Please turn off your cell phones now. Thank you. So that's going to, okay. Um, I, I'd really like to uh, have some, you know, uh, just looking at a prior year's data and be able to understand what the projected savings would be. Had we had a department like this, that would have been nice to have that information. Um, and it, as uh, Chair Bronson said, we do have recourse if this isn't. Um, yeah, it's an exempt position, so it's not subject to the merit system in ways that non-exempt are. Supervisor Ballard, yes. Madam Chair, I think I've, I've heard enough that I'm fairly comfortable with the proposal and I move approval of the item. Second. Motion Madam and a second. Supervisor Elias. You know, a couple things I did want to mention. mention. Um, my mom used to use this word all the time in Spanish. It's called uh, Medici. And sticking your nose in somebody else's business. And, and uh, you know, I hate making generalizations about lawyers. But I never met a good lawyer who wasn't a Medici on some level, you know? Because that's how you come up with a good product, partially, in, 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 in doing your business as a lawyer. Because uh, you want to know about everything. The, the urge to be a Medici in this position is going to be almost insatiable, I think. Um, so. So with that, I, I am concerned and I'm, I'm gonna vote against the motion. But I would also add that, that yesterday uh, I received a letter, and I'm sure all of you did as well, from our legal defender, Isabel Garcia, uh, announcing her retirement after 22 years of service to Pima County. And I'd just like to thank her for her years of service uh, and the high ethics that she always practiced in her office uh, over there. And uh, in particular, the fact that she always was insistent um, on making sure that uh, her clients and the clients of her office received the highest level of uh, legal defense that they deserve. And so I'd like to thank her for her years of service to Pima County and to all of us here. Thank you, Supervisor Elias. We do have a question on the floor. Um, are there any objections? I object. Two, I, did I hear two? Roll call. Roll call. 
Supervisor Carroll. In favor of the savings, I vote yes. Supervisor Reeves. Yes. No. Supervisor Miller. No. Supervisor Valadez. Aye. Chair Bronson. Aye. Motion carries three to two. Moving on to real.